I wanted to welcome you today to the new web series that we have pre SharePoint conference. SharePoint 2019 is just around the corner and we want to make sure that you are in the know now of what the technology can do with SharePoint, OneDrive, Microsoft Teams and other technologies that we'll cover in this webinar plus three others pre the conference so that when you get to the SharePoint conference and you join us live in Vegas, you are well up to speed with everything that you need to know. Today's topic is about sharing and working together with everybody that you work with, both inside and outside of your company, and that's doing it with confidence in the sense of when you share, you know you have control of your content, you have the ability to work with people inside and outside, keep it as private as you need, or open it up to work with the people that you need to. Today's episode is brought to you by the IntraZone, and I'm pleased to be one of those hosts that bring you the IntraZone so show. The IntraZone is a show about the SharePoint Intelligent Intranet, and it's something where we intend to cover lots of different topics. We bring in SharePoint, we bring in OneDrive, we talk about the data centers, we talk about the AI that's coming to SharePoint spaces in an upcoming episode, and we talk to people like my co-host, who I'll introduce in a second, Tejas, and a feature that he's working on in terms of bringing in SharePoint content, content into Microsoft Teams. So we cover a wide variety of topics. We go in and outside of Microsoft to talk to guests, both on site, in the studio. You can see a set of faces here of people that we've had on the show. Jeff Teeper, we've had, uh, we talked to him at the SharePoint conference last year. We hope and intend to do that again this year. Chris there with a thumbs up, that's my co-host. And he and I talk to a lot of great people and intend to do so twice a, one, uh, twice a month with a bonus episode to focus on what we call the roadmap pit stop. So there's a lot that we're point, pumping out there. There's a lot of feedback we're getting as far as uh, topics that people prefer, guests that they'd love to hear from. You see from here a lot of the faces and people that we've had on the show, including our great mascot in the bottom left. That's Peanut. She is a wonderful IntraZone cheerleader and really embodies the essence of the show. So I hope you go visit us at aka.ms slash the IntraZone. Check out all the episodes, download uh, the ones that you want. We hope you subscribe, rate and review the uh, podcast and enjoy it and let us know what you think. The topic today is all about sharing and working together with the people that you need to with confidence, both inside and outside of your organization. My name is Mark Cashman. I'm a senior product manager on the SharePoint and OneDrive team, and I'm joined today by Tejas Mehta, who will be here from the engineering side of the house. He's a principal program manager focused on everything you can do with SharePoint team sites, moving from classic to modern, but really that great leap of moving from classic into using Microsoft Teams with great content service from SharePoint in that rich experience of Microsoft Teams, which is the hub for teamwork. You'll see a lot in demo. We'll set up a little context with when you think about these different areas where you leverage the technology. When you're working with your inner loop, the people that you work with day to day, these are tasks and actions that may not be finished uh, assets. These might be campaigns that are in the works, a product that is not yet launched, a program that you're wanting to start internally and you're working on the details. Those day to day interactions may involve rough drafts of proposals, rough drafts of presentations, PDFs, images, videos that are under review, and they're going to go through some of those chat experiences that are a little bit more back and forth, like should we use red, green or blue? Once you decide to use something like blue as the color that you're going to go with in the campaign, you turn to your outer loop and that's on the right hand side. When we put a lot of what you can do in SharePoint, to do uh, broader portals and larger campaign type sites in conjunction with that engagement model that Yammer offers so that you can embed a Yammer discussion and have a really rich offering to share information, but have it be a two way street where you're having a rich discussion, but not on red, green or blue. You've already decided on blue. Now it's the point of, hey, do I qualify for this campaign? I'm in the uh, in the EU and I'm in the government sector and our group wants to engage on this new campaign that you have, do we qualify? And then you would respond certainly via Yammer. All the while, certainly there is everything that you do in email for those pervasive uh, targeted conversations with people both inside and outside. And of course, SharePoint plays a role there in doing smart attachments in conjunction with how OneDrive and SharePoint support both inner loop, outer loop and Outlook is of course that pervasiveness of video. So if you have rich video assets like today, if we record this meeting and want to share it internally, we can do that. We can make this recording on demand, of course, outside of it through Microsoft Teams. But that value of stream and the back end that gives us that rich enterprise video capabilities 
is something that we'll actually focus on in the next webinar next Wednesday. So keep in mind uh, how all this technology comes together. In the broader context of how we package it, just to be very frank, we call this Microsoft 365. A component of that is Office 365, Windows 10, and what we do for enterprise mobility and security. And really where we're focused today is that second bucket that you see built for teamwork. Primarily everything you think in terms of SharePoint, OneDrive, Microsoft Teams is how we help you be more productive to give you those superpowers to how you can work with others, share documents, share information, find other people, pot potentially reuse assets so that you can save yourself time. And we focus on the left hand side of leveraging uh, creational creation type assets like Office to create your presentations, your worksheets, take notes, certainly to provide proposals and final assets. And when we get into focusing on how these are all integrated, we focus it on being simple, consistent, unique. You'll see experiences that I'll show you across a different set of products that are the same experience. And then uh, Tejas will show you some of the, uh, the same there to show you how we're wanting you to work with files with confidence consistently. And all the while, we've got not only a, a highly and uh, secure place for you to put your information, but we also put a lot of intelligence in how we can do proactive and reactive detection of things that are happening inside the data center where your information is securely stored. When you get to the level of SharePoint and OneDrive and how we help connect the workplace with intelligence, with these technologies, not just as standalone products that you know do X, Y, and Z, but how they all come together to help you do these different topics, which if you look a little bit squinting at them, really define the four webinars that we're providing pre-SharePoint conference. The one today is share and work together and how we want to do that so you can do that inside and outside of your company with confidence. Inform and engage is really the outer loop that I mentioned on how people can work and broadly distribute information and collect feedback within the organization. You'll have uh, another session where we talk about how uh, SharePoint in conjunction with Power Apps and Flow and even things as simple as forms. You'll have a form at the end of this, hopefully uh, to join us in an exciting giveaway. So we've got a form to fill out, but those are really ways to build out uh, uh, simple business solutions or very complex business solutions, but in your hands and your powers without having to think about a three month project to get it done. And then finally, there's this concept of harnessing and collecting information, which could be simple as an FAQ site or as complex as a re record center repository to find that uh, finished content to be able to then uh, access it with confidence to know what those finished assets are that you can share. Are they OK to share with customer, with partner, or are they internal only? And you'll find those assets uh, you know, in the way that you would uh, easily through search or discovery. Um, last point here is that, of course, everything is protected. And from an admin perspective, the ability to manage these environments at a very broad level or at a very uh, targeted level. Today we're talking about SharePoint team sites and there's a distinct role being the site owner that has a lot of ways that you can configure the site to set it up properly for your team to enable external sharing or to turn it off to enable a number of other different functionalities and of course to have things set up to flow directly into Microsoft Teams to make that a better together story. And from a developer's perspective, of course, you can extend and develop to your heart's content, simple configurations all the way up to real customizations using the SharePoint framework. So last slide here is really to showcase when you're leveraging SharePoint, you are putting your content in the repository that is the content service that distributes and services all of these different endpoints that we'll talk about here or you'll hear in the other webinars of where people go and they uh, obviously collaborate on documents where they can share and work together on content uh, with their team in Teams or Outlook. With OneDrive, I'll certainly focus that first here in about two seconds to show you what that looks like uh, to access all of your files across Office 365 through the employee engagement with Yammer and Stream and building out those digital experiences with SharePoint portals and something very exciting what we announced last year, SharePoint Spaces. Again, security top of mind, leveraging AI and intelligence so you more discover content and people based on who you're working with and what you're working on. And it's all extensible in the context of developers being able to write real solutions that are uh, of value to the company. So let's turn one last slide and then we'll move into demo to talk about OneDrive. OneDrive is a place where you access and share and collaborate on all of your files, not just your personal files. You certainly have a distinct location to put your personal work files, but you also have
have access to see all of the that you would expect if you're directly in that same SharePoint library. It's not a copy of the content. It is I'm actually everything that I've been showing you from a, a SharePoint a PowerPoint perspective is actually just a file in the OneDrive. So I'm in my demo account here. I'm signed in as Mark Cashman in Contoso and I'm working with all my files. The first thing you see here are my files in my OneDrive. These are the ones that I manage and you can go through and you can change how you view them. If list is a, a nice way to go, if you switch to a tile view, you'll see that we've got a really nice rich experience to show thumbnails. We, we support up to 300 plus file types to give rich uh, presentation of what those files are. Not only just in thumbnail, but if I click in, you'll see that I will stay within OneDrive and I'm now going to navigate the content. The first one will take a little bit to load here because it's a bit of a larger file, but once it loads, you'll see uh, it's a really nice asset uh, that should be coming through here. We'll give it one chance to come through one more time. And then what's going to load up here is a three dimensional rendering of the new Surface Studio. And once this pops up, like I said, it's just it's the one part of my demo where I, I knew it was uh, going to take a little bit, but it, it's worth showing once it pops up here and we'll give it about three more seconds. If it doesn't pop up, I'll move on, but I will paint the picture that there's a beautiful rendition of SharePoint Studio that spins around and is three dimensional. There it is, <clears throat> and you can even see it on the back side if you wanted to see what is the makeup of how many ports are on the back. Obviously the nice dial and the mouse that comes with it along with the stylus and the pen. Um, but as you see, we get a nice rich preview. Uh, I'm going to click back into my file so that I can show you once you're actually in that view to be able to see all of your files. Um, let's go into Excel. I go into this asset because what I really want to show you is that once you're in and you're navigating through, you get these rich previews. So again, I'm still in OneDrive and now I'm seeing my PowerPoint presentation and I can click through it without committing to opening it. I can go back into that Excel spreadsheet and I can see the rich data coming through. This is where it's going to be able to, if I had uh, things like um, uh, different sheets and whatnot coming through with the different information. I could navigate through it and uh, I'm going to click through here. Sorry with a little bit of time. Um, this is actually a DICOM image, so this is not a PNG. This is actually a .dcm file with a rich preview of an X-ray of a knee. This is now I'll go and open you where you can actually see all the information that's coming through about this asset and you can see that this is a PDF again, a PDF that I can navigate through. And as I click through to a couple other assets, you'll see all of the different file types that we support. This is another Excel file that's got a little bit more rich information. Uh, and as I let it render here, you can see that a lot of rich data and a lot of uh, light that goes away. So we get a little dark in here, but I can switch to pivot tables. I can do a lot of different rich uh, interactions with the file again without committing to it. This was a scan that was taken on a OneDrive mobile app brought in as a PDF and as you'll see what I can do, you can even mark on, on it on the mobile device. And then just two last examples. This is a, a Word document and then the last thing here is even a zip file where not only to see that it is a zip file, but I can actually see the assets and work with them inside the zip file themselves. So there's a lot of rich capabilities of what I can do with my files. This all accrues to what you can do in a SharePoint document library and as Tejas will show you in another uh, example, it also brings that rich capability right inside Microsoft's Teams. So a couple other things I want to point out here uh, that, that you know is some of the benefit of what you get when you work with your files in this way is I can see all of the recent content that I've been working on. These are all the assets that I've either uploaded recently that I've edited. You can see the different uh, uh, presentations that we're getting ready for the upcoming webinars. I can see content that's both shared with me, which is really helpful not to have to dig through my email. But I also get a new pivot now of shared by me. Same rich controls of the library, same ability to see the content in line and stay within OneDrive. And once I start to commit to work on something, I of course can edit, share, do all of those things. What I wanted to show you is that new sharing experience. And this is the sharing experience here inside of 
uh, the ability to share. And one of the things that we want to hit home is if you go in to change what happens when you share, I'm really adjusting what happens when somebody clicks this link or opens it when it looks like an email attachment, even though it really is a link attached, a link to a document. But I can control who I share it with. It's anyone with a link, which means you on this webinar. If I if I tweeted out this link, you'd be able to view this asset, no problem. Or I can limit to only people within Contoso, people that already have access. If you think about working in a group, you already people who are members of that group, or if I wanted to set specific people. With the anonymous access, I can actually allow editing. I can set the expiration date if I wanted to set this to a couple days ahead so that people could review the content, but then not have access to it by default after two days. I could set a password with whatever I want, and I could make it so that if they were going to only view it off of a password, that they wouldn't be able to actually download the asset locally. So there's a lot that you can do before you share, and once I decide and set up what I want, I can though go then apply it and either send an email directly off of that or simply copy the link and now behind this link is all of the smarts of what it is I want people to do when they click it. View it, view it anonymously, block download and expire in two days, all wrapped in this link. It's a really powerful sharing experience and to the extent that this is the same experience when I'm on my desktop. So one of the things that we wanted to talk about in terms of OneDrive is the ability to sync all of this content. So I of course synced uh, more than just what you're seeing here in my demo. The sync client enables me to sync OneDrive, SharePoint Online, SharePoint on-premises with SharePoint 2019, and of course anything that's been shared with me and whatnot is also, uh, I have the ability to sync it. Now the smarts behind syncing content from the cloud is of course it starts in the cloud, that's where we treat it as primary, and anything you see here with a blue cloud is in the cloud, I have visibility to it, but it's not actually taking up any space on my hard drive until I commit to it. If I wanted to pull down one of these assets that I walked through, the sales analysis, I can right click and say always keep on my device. When I do that, you'll see the cloud turn sync and turn to green, which means it's now available to me even if I don't have Wi-Fi connectivity. And I can do that at the file level or I could do it if I wanted to take all of these presentations offline and do it at the folder level. So now all of these things are with me available even offline. But the value here of when I'm connected is I can see all of my files. And when I say all of my files, I truly mean all of my files. Here are my real OneDrive personal consumer. This is my real OneDrive at Microsoft. Here's my OneDrive demo Contoso. And then here are assets that are coming from SharePoint sites where I've chosen to go to the document library or through Microsoft Teams like Tages will show you where you can actually click the sync button. And so I've got one site that I'll show you here in two seconds where I've actually synced all the content from the Contoso Sourcing Europe site. And as you can see here, I have view to all the content in that document library, and I've chosen to take one asset offline, and you'll see this checkbox is because I clicked and opened it, but I didn't want it to actually come and stay with me. So the next time I log off, that asset will be just cloud only. This one I've committed to be on my uh, desktop full time. So that's a rich capability around syncing content. And of course, if you have access to content, access to a document library, or of course your own OneDrive, you can take that all off uh, by just clicking the sync button whenever you see it. And again, Tejas is gonna show you that. One other thing I'll tee up for, uh, for Tejas to show is down here, we talk about OneDrive being a way to view all of your files. And these are all of my group files that are leveraged in uh, accessing them wherever I need to, here through OneDrive, or if I'm on the SharePoint team site, I would see the document library, or as you'll see through Microsoft Teams, these are the group files. They're all the same files, different ways to leverage them and access them. The last thing through OneDrive is of course the Discover tab, and this is a way we use the smarts of the Microsoft Graph. It's asking who does Mark work with and what is he working on? Let's promote content here through the lens of files, files that Mark would be interested, on, interested in. And as you can see, there's a number of files that people are working on that I may have never come across, but are of interest to me based on people that I work with and content that I work on. So let me jump over, talk a little bit about SharePoint. You're gonna see a lot more SharePoint in the context of what Tages will show you, but this is now if I wanna create a site and then I'll show you a finished site and then we'll move on. So of course today we're talking about the inner loop. So we're gonna go and create a team site. And when I go to create a team site, I can use the out of box template, which we call site designs. That's this team site, or I can go in and actually choose 
a specific site template, site design, that's been created by either my department or our main IT. And they've deployed that and made it available for me as an end user to create a site with the right design and then to go in and, and give it a new name. So we'll call this SPC Share and Work together. Um, and we'll see that now what we're actually doing is creating a group. So we're going to go in, we see that the group alias is available, and now I can go in and say this is information that is available for everybody. I'm working on a pretty open campaign within my intranet. I want to make it so that members from any part of the organization can join, so I'll make it public and I'll select my language as English and click next. What I'm going to do now is that that object in Azure Active Directory is being created that will control the list of members that I list out here and name. So I'm going to go in and add my friend Tejas. Uh, I'll add my friend Adam. Uh, and I think Tejas is today playing Isaiah. So let's see if Isaiah is here. He'll be one of our members. And when I click finish, you'll see how fast it is that we create a group connected site that has awareness of all the other apps that we'll reference here when I show you a team site that we've been working on for a little bit. But just from the get go, what it's doing now is it's created the site. And as you can see, as I get a little teaser up here that says, and now we're rendering that site design to adjust the site based on what it is the preferences were of the organization based on the site design that's now being applied. So if I refresh to see the changes, you'll see that we take the out of box template and we configure it and apply a different look and feel, a couple of different web parts appear, and we use a different theme. So let me show you one last thing and then I'll, I'll hopefully hit it home with a couple of demos on mobile is this is now a site. If you think about it being used for a num uh, uh, number of months or potentially years uh, because the modern experience has been out now for a year or two, Tages will show you how to get from classic to modern and we make that super easy in product. But this site is connected to a team's experience. We have documents. I'll show you that. We've got a number of lists. We've got a team notebook here and we've got the connection to planner if we want to manage our tasks in planner, which is a really nice embedded experience. So let me show you a few things. First, if I go to the document library, you'll see that not only do we have, of course, a nice uh, way to pin assets to the top. We have great way if we've got content that we want to look into like this uh, empowering teamwork. We, of course, can view the information, view the activity on the file. We can actually share just like I showed you to go into that sharing dialogue. Sorry, we've got two assets that got selected here. If you go in the information, you'll see the rich history of what's happened with this file and of course the core properties with the ability to manage that metadata right in line if I wanted to. So if I wanted to go in and enter a key point, change the effort, uh, I could do that. Um, and uh, you'll see that I can do it right here in line to add that to be medium priority and it'll save that metadata without me having to go a couple clicks in to access all the, the media. And if you see when I added that and I added the, the medium context, you'll see that it actually hits a lot of rich formatting based on conditional uh, 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 rule set that we have, which I'll show you here. If I go into uh, my general folder, you'll see a couple of things here. If I minimize the information, not only can I pin assets within folders, I get all the rich column formatting here in the context of a library for all of those things that are medium. If I wanted to pivot down and only filter by certain things that are uh, medium. When I apply that, it'll filter it down to show me only medium uh, and all of the other uh, things around how much effort it takes. And I can set those parameters very easily by going in and hitting the column settings and do a format of this column. And you'll see I've already made this choice, but if I go in to show you the edit the template, I can go and choose what does it mean color wise visually when something's marked as high, medium or low. And these are custom colors that you can choose so that it makes the most sense based on the information you're trying to convey visually. Now, if I go into a list, you'll see that I've done some of those same things here based on the best East Coast pizza. And this is a rough area where I know you might have your own take on what the best pizza is on the East Coast. Of course, I'm always open to interpretation to add something to this list. But as you can see here, I actually am using the location column. And to do that, if I wanted to go add a new pizza, we'll call this Tejas's pizza. We'll look up a real location. We'll just type in the word pizza, which is actually going to do a lookup through Bing Maps 
and we'll maybe add a Pizza Hut, which is going to get me in trouble because that's the first thing that showed up here. Um, but I can go in and choose if this is in Boston. You're from Boston, Mr. Tejas, so we're going to add that. And when I save this down, it's going to pull in that location information, but actually pop populate multiple columns as you go across, not only the name of the Pizza Hut, but actually the location uh, of Tejas's Pizza, which is in Washington, the United States, with the zip code 99336. So a lot of smarts around how we work with lists and of course how we connect them to do and create flows something as simple as on this list item i could request sign off send that around and uh, have a really rich experience for what people what people do there and um, the last thing i want to show you is back on the home page is of course the home page itself uh, so that you can get a, a feel for what's there when i turn to mobile to show you a little bit more but we've got news we've got quick links We've got uh, different assets around what's happening in the activity feed. And of course, all the documents that I showed you are coming through on the document web part on the right hand side, of which I now have a rich uh, view into uh, seeing what those are uh, based on either a, a list view or even thumbnails. And at the bottom, we have a web part dedicated to showing you all the videos that are coming from a specific channel called Contoso Electronics. So keep that in mind because I'm really going to switch over to show you from a mobile perspective what we've got going over here. So if we go into here, hopefully you'll be able to see my mobile device. This is an Android phone. I'm going to first go into SharePoint to show you a lot of what these experiences are. And you saw that we were talking about a list. So this is another list called the World of Bagels. I was in Toronto recently and I made a list of all the great bagel shops in the area. And then of course included other things. So I can go in and, and look at the different list items. And if I wanted to, I could edit it here and make a change based on anything that I wanted to add to that list. And of course, if I wanted to add a new list item, I can do that very easily. But what you're really seeing here is the new find experience on the find tab where I can see quick access based on things that I've been doing recently. If I want to get right back into the document that I was viewing, if I wanted to go see the list of the site that I was in, here are the frequent sites. The one that we were just in is the Contoso Sourcing Europe site. And as you see here, it's a rich uh, presentation within the SharePoint mobile app rendering that full site now in a responsive view to one column. We had multiple columns. Now we're down to one where we see all the news. We see the quick links coming through. We see the video that's now actually playable. So if I wanted to play that asset and view it here in line without leaving the page, I could. If I go in and I can see all the site activities of everything that we've been doing, including some of the changes you've seen me make here in the in the web episode, um, all the way through to all my documents, a way to navigate through all the way down to see that whole channel coming from stream. If I wanted to go through and I wanted to see just a list of files, we now support a view into the document library without leaving the context of the SharePoint mobile app. <clears throat> so I'm here to able to go in that same document library that gives me the same rich experience to go in and if I want to, I can share it and you can see that I can go in and have a really nice experience to get that link, share it through a number of different media, uh, specifically into uh, Teams, Yammer. Uh, if I wanted to go into Outlook to share that, I certainly could. I get a rich view and great access to go to all of that content. Last thing I want to show you is really the news all around me. So <clears throat> here is one of the news articles that was recently published in another team site that's bubbled up to me because it's targeting news for me of aggregate news all across all the sites that I'm active in and all of the communication sites that are being published to me, including soon the organization news that's being pushed top down. But I get a rich representation of the news around me with the ability for me to go in and view and see how somebody set up this news to read it. I could even save it for later if I wanted to. In the top, I can click that nice bookmark and that will give me the ability to find that more uh, quickly. I can go in and like it. And if I wanted to, I could leave them a comment, say nice job. and post that down. So it keeps me engaged, keeps me informed, and the news comes to me, especially if I subscribe to things that I want to be notified, even as alerts on my mobile device. So if I switch over and I go into the OneDrive app, you'll see that I can see all those same files. Here is the presentation that we're giving today uh, and the set of presentations based on the webinars that are coming up. Uh, if I go in to see my recent documents, I can see and get access not only to view them, but actually edit them right there on my mobile device. They follow me, this recent view. I can see all content that's been shared with me and that same pivot of being able to see what I want to discover. Same list, 
that I saw on the web is coming and following me and giving me access right here on my mobile device. The last thing that I want to show you is what happens if you want to scan something. And so now we do a couple of things that are really smart. We allow you to scan um, uh, whiteboards. We allow you to scan uh, uh, receipts and whatnot. And something fun that I want to scan here is one of the giveaways that I'll link to and uh, have a little contest after the webinar is a new pair of SharePoint socks. So <laughs> we'll take this down and as we scan it, we can choose where do we want to put it. If there are any required metadata fields, we'd be able to fill those out. And then when I check the box at the top, it's going to upload that image directly into my OneDrive. And now I have that with me wherever I go, web or mobile. So let me switch back. Uh, that's a lot around how you share and work together in the context of OneDrive and SharePoint. And then we'll cover one more uh, set of slides and then we'll get to Tejas to show us what does that all mean to get to modern and to uh, get into uh, working in Microsoft Teams. So we really see the value of how SharePoint and OneDrive work better together with Microsoft Teams. Uh, take a second for this to render here, but we really do see it as a better together story. And as you'll hear from uh, Tejas, his team was working very closely with the Microsoft Teams team to make SharePoint show up as a first party experience with the rich experiences you expect to work with your content and to work with other your other peers inside and outside of your organization. If you think about what SharePoint offers way beyond what I've shared today and the focus of today's session really is on that inner loop. But if you look at the breadth of what SharePoint does in both inner loop and outer loop, it gives you that rich content service through Office 365 for files, folders, pages, news, and of course the sites themselves. We wanna make sure that you have anywhere access through OneDrive, both in the web, mobile, and through the sync client. And as you start to think about building your modern intranet on SharePoint, that's the topic for next week. You'll see these rich employee experiences that are meant to be engaging. So you can easily find, search, and discover the people and content that you're looking for uh, across all aspects of the type of content, whether it's uh, early draft, all the way through to finished assets that are more knowledge of your whole organization. And there's a whole rich ecosystem in terms of what our partners offer on top of SharePoint as a platform as it's always been. And in the modern space, that couldn't be more true than it is today with the SharePoint framework, Power Apps and Flow to be able to build all the way from no code type assets, forms and flow, all the way up to rich true customizations out of Visual Studio to be able to prepare content, which could be custom web parts, custom extensions on pages, uh, or, or even more certainly to pull information out of Office 365 in your own custom components. <clears throat> when we turn to the value of what Microsoft Teams offers, it absolutely is a place to go to communicate in a rich experience with content, with the dialogue itself, to be able to at mention people, to be able to go into the rich experience like we're offering today. One little note is we're actually delivering this through the Teams broadcast capabilities, which is going from one to one chat all the way up to today's webinar, where we're broadcasting externally or all the way through our organization through the rich application of Microsoft Teams. When it comes to collaboration, working on uh, teamwork and all the way up to even sharing assets that are on the uh, on the outer loop and bringing those in to have rich dialogue and discussion, to be able to share ideas, to be able to showcase things that you think are important, you can certainly do that uh, and pulling in information from throughout the organization, throughout the internet is super easy. And then of course, having that rich discussion is the huge value that uh, Microsoft Teams brings. They also have a great developer story to bring in assets. We have a lot of what we offer for SharePoint and other assets throughout Office 365, but a lot of third party offerings to bring in technology and information through the different apps that you're using to have them be in more one place where your team is gathering and working together. And of course, we do this with the highest level of security, compliance and manageability that real <clears throat> value here is anything that you're doing primarily through OneDrive or SharePoint is already stored in a very high level compliant manner. It's highly secure. Bring it into Teams doesn't change any of that. It's a window into that content in place through the value of what you would expect in what you can do in uh, SharePoint, Office 365, and the true value of our service level agreement through Microsoft 365. So I'm going to hand it over to Tejas, who's going to walk us through a number of things, and uh, we'll get him set up here. It'll take us about 10 seconds to transition. Give me just a moment while that's coming up. 
I'll talk about pizza in Boston. <laughs> unmute mine. Yeah. Okay. okay. And. It'll come through. Uh, send it. It should already be sent live. I just take a second to catch up. Just don't press it. I will not press it. Okay, you're coming up. I am still on video, so I'm going to switch to you. You have to click on the presenter video. Uh, uh, yeah, that's showing that I'm live. Uh, go on to the left side. On the yeah, add your content from below, and then my desktop, and then set. Yeah. Very inception. There you go. You go. All right. Thank you, Mark. I am Tejas. I'm a program manager on the SharePoint team, and as Mark uh, noted earlier, I spend a lot of my time focused on SharePoint experiences, uh, uh, the team collaboration perspective, and how integrate uh, and work with the rest of Office 365 groups and uh, Microsoft Teams. So uh, I would start, uh, you know, as Mark alluded earlier, you know, Office 365 groups provides a rich diversity in the way that uh, users can collaborate, whether it's email and Outlook or uh, real-time chat in Teams, uh, Kanban boards in Planner, uh, and of course, SharePoint, rich content with lists, libraries, pages, et cetera. You know, SharePoint really is the content service that, that powers um, Office 365. So the beauty of having uh, Office 365 groups uh, and all of these collaborative modes um, is that you have a shared common group identity in Azure Active Directory that not only acts as uh, the master of the group's membership, uh, but can also be used to manage policies and lifecycle um, for them. Now, from a modernization standpoint, if today, if you were to create a SharePoint site from SharePoint, you automatically get a group connected uh, site, uh, and that does play a critical role for uh, collaboration against SharePoint, you know, powering the files, experiences, and pages and lists. Um, and that's what you get out of the box if you create a site from SharePoint. Now, you might be wondering as we do this push towards invest all of the investments are making in modern experiences. Um, if you're sitting on an existing SharePoint site that might be on premises that you're thinking about migrating to Office 365, or if you're already in SharePoint Online and uh, you know, these more traditional SharePoint sites that are not group connected, uh, we want to make sure that we're providing a mechanism to get you in place to uh, have those uh, leverage those assets to take advantage of Office 365 groups. So that's the first thing we're going to demonstrate here. What you see here is so it was classic traditional SharePoint site that's not uh, connected to a group. It's fairly vanilla in that you know, there's a document library web part uh, on the page, some image and some, and some prose to talk about the, the actual team site itself. So if I want to take this uh, classic site and modernize, putting that in air quotes by adding adding uh, a new Office 365 group to connect to, I'll click on the gear menu you'll see that there's an option here to connect to new Office 365 group. I'm going to go ahead and click. Right away, you'll be presented with a panel that describes uh, specifically what this process entails. Uh, you get a little bit of information about you know, what, what uh, an Office 365 group is in terms of the new assets and resources that, that uh, will be created uh, as you go through the process. And then I think a checklist of things that will happen under the covers. Um, a few key points to point out are that your existing site and the content hierarchy and any permissions that you already have will remain in place. Uh, but a new uh, modern home page will be added to your uh, site's pages library. And then through this wizard process, we'll help you select uh, Office 365 group members and owners um, based on the existing membership site. You'll notice there's a call out here saying that this uh, site we've detected uh, security groups. So in, in this case, uh, this particular site has a security group called Melissa Torres Direct Reports that has access to the site. Uh, it's important to call out the fact that the membership uh, structure for a SharePoint site is different from that of Office 365 groups. And if you want uh, all of the members of the security group to have access to the rest of the group resources that get provisioned, they'll need to be added to the 365 group itself. So I'm going to go ahead and click on let's get started. Work through the user here. I'm presented with another panel. 
that's collecting information uh, about the new Office 365 group that's being created. And we pre-populate uh, these, these fields with information that we glean from the existing SharePoint site. So the new group name, uh, we pre-populate with the site name, which is also Design Lab USA. Uh, you can edit the email address that the, the new group is going to get. Uh, you're told what the URL for the SharePoint site is. If you've got classification labels enabled in your tenancy, you can actually pick a sensitivity uh, label that gets applied. And that, uh, you know, as we invest in uh, policy features going forward, these uh, labels can map to uh, policies that govern how the, the content um, uh, is protected or, or how users behave uh, from a collaborative standpoint. And you can choose the group's privacy settings, whether it's public, anyone within the tenant, uh, or private, where you specify specific members. So I'm going to go ahead and click on connect groups, uh, connect group now. And on this panel, uh, we get to decide if we want to have additional owners uh, or members that are added to the uh, the new Office 365 group. The list of people that you see here are uh, existing owners of the SharePoint site. So they're, they're suggested members, uh, they're suggested owners for the new Office 365 group. So Jeff and Pradeep are here. Um, and then members are also proposed based on the existing uh, members of the 365 group. I'm going to add Mark here as, as an additional member of this group. And I'm going to go click on finish here. So while that process wraps up, I will be redirected to, the, to that new uh, page that's been added to the existing uh, SharePoint site. But what we have now is a site that is connected to an Office 365 group. And I will orient you to a few things here on this particular page. Uh, you see that right in the header, you'll see that there's a private group label that shows up. So the word group is a, is a, is a good indicator telling you that this was a successful. Um, so the classification was selected to classify. You'll see also in the header that there's a pile of faces here that, that uh, indicate the members of the group. If I was to click on the member count, you'll see uh, who the owners and members of this particular group are, and I can make changes to their role within the group right in line in this, in this membership panel. Uh, in the left nav, I call out some attention to some of the group resources. So we know that with every Office 365 group that gets provisioned from SharePoint, um, this you get a conversation in the left navigation. And if I was to click on that, I would take you to the group's mailbox and you can start emailing the, your collaborators, members of this group. You have the group notebook, the document library, which, uh, which is the same document library that uh, uh, existed in the site uh, as before. Um, I can go ahead and edit the navigation uh, of um, uh, of the site here, and if I drop down different choices, you'll see that other group resources show up here as well. So conversation already exists in the left now. I wouldn't add, I won't add a, another node to it, but it'll, you know the calendar is there, the notebook is there, and there's also planner. So it's a really neat way for the uh, to be able to go and add um, uh, quick pointers in the, in the left nav to uh, other resources within uh, within the group. Other things that I'll uh, point out on the site right here is it, it, it just indicates some of the, uh, the new modern features. There's a, a news web part that's uh, in this layout. It allows you to create a content, sort of publish it, so it's consumed across you know various different points as Mark demonstrated a little bit earlier, it's web or mobile. There's an activity web part. This is really interesting in that uh, in the, if you remember from the previous homepage of the site, you had just a list of files in the document library, but no real inclination on what might be taking place from a relevance perspective. Um, the site activity web part is a great way to, uh, to add a glance, get uh, insight what is taking place in the context of your site, whether it's updates to files, lists, um, pages. And this is all live information. So you'll see that uh, sometime yesterday I was editing some of these files, so you can see that these, these pop up here. And if this was a, a live group that was being used uh, with other collaborators, you would see other, other faces here also. Uh, one last thing I'll point out here, uh, we move on to the next part of the demo, is in the left nav, uh, it's important to note that the previous homepage still exists. So if you invested uh, in customizing your previous homepage in a particular way with web parts, uh, et cetera, there's still a pointer uh, that gets you back. So again, none of the existing content is pulled over or replaced. Uh, the, the simple process of, of uh, groupify is basically take your existing site, create a new group, 
add a new page uh, and, and uh, make sure that the members of the new group have access to the resources. All right, so um, I'm going to quickly switch over to another site that had been groupified previously, just again to drive home the point uh, of different group resources that come to bear as part of this modernization process. So here's Contoso sourcing. Uh, you'll see that if I scroll down to activity, the what I showed you before actually called out only activity that was taking place in the, in the context of SharePoint itself. So that was files as pages. But I, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that there's, that there's some Outlook cards that show up here. So this is some work that we've been doing to start bringing in um, activity that's taking place outside of the context of your SharePoint site, but within uh, your group. And starting with Outlook, so you're seeing recent uh, conversations that are popping into the uh, into the feed here. Uh, but over time, you're going to start seeing other um, application activity within the context of the group showing up here as well. So you can start to think of the team site homepage as really being a way to aggregate relevant activity uh, and content uh, that gets surfaced in, in one place. All right, I'll scroll down a little bit uh, and point out that there's a planner web part as well. So if you are using planner to manage tasks, uh, there's, you know, you have a nice canvas here in your pages to be able to add parts so that again, making the SharePoint site that much more useful um, for your collaborators. All right, so sort of part one um, is showing you some of the group benefits of taking your classic sites and modernizing them. Just doing a quick time check, about five minutes left, so fast forward a little bit. Um, now, if I was to go back to the site, you'll notice in the left, navigation there's a little banner that pops up here so by default when you create a site from teams uh sorry when you create a site from sharepoint you get a group but you don't automatically get it connected to a microsoft team and uh, as mark discussed earlier the teams being of the collaboration um, it, we do see the more users that use teams that help you the underlying collaboration on the content uh that occurs as well so we're introducing, we're rolling this out right now, this little banner that shows up in the left nav uh, that basically asks you if you want to add a Microsoft team to this to this uh, Office 365 group. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, create a team. And what that's doing is it will take this existing group and add uh, a, a Microsoft team to it. And, and it looks like it was successful. So I'm going to click here, take to team. And what this should do is land you directly into the general channel for the new team that was just created. Take a moment. Here we go. Contoso Design Lab USA. So it's it's really cool to take an existing site that you might have been collaborating on with your collaborators for a long period of time, and then within a couple of clicks, literally, we've we've added an Office 365 group, and now we've added. So in the interest of time, I'm going to switch over to another team uh, that uh, Mark actually showed, well, another group that Mark showed from the SharePoint perspective, which was the Contoso Sourcing Europe. But that was a, a site that was also groupified and teamified, and I'm going to jump into some of the experiences uh, and light up uh, inside the team's experience here. So in the conversation flow here, you'll see that um, there is a number of different uh, 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 chat activity that's taking place. You know, I'm going to point out this this, uh, this news page, this news item that shows up, and that's because in the channel itself we've got a connector that's set up um, for news, and that means that anytime a news item is published from the SharePoint team site, it actually gets uh, piped into uh, the chat here in this in this particular channel, so that you can have uh, rich collaboration from a chat perspective around. So that's one of it's a work that we've done to really start bringing some of SharePoint content into um, into Teams. I'm going to switch over to the Files tab here, and a lot of feedback that we've gotten over the years is the files experiences across uh, Office 365 applications are you know they're similar but not quite the same. Different uh, actions and commands and that sort of thing. So we've done a lot of work uh, in the, over the past year to really engineer these common SharePoint controls uh, that we effectively build once and that, and that get hosted in other experiences and ways. So this is that also sourcing um, Europe document library, the general folder of that document library. And you'll note that this looks very much like the document library that Mark 
demonstrated as well. You've got uh, metadata on your columns. Uh, you've got metadata column formatting here. Um, you've got the ability to do things like filtering and grouping by um, pinning. Uh, you can pin documents at the top, unpin them, and select items um, and get more information about them. You can sync. So it, it, Mark demonstrated this as well, and I think he's got this very site sync on his device in social sourcing here. So I'm not going to go through this process, but I'll, if I was to click on this, I'll get the very same experience that you saw uh, Mark demonstrate as well. This is really the document library lit up inside of Teams, and uh, you get the ability to switch views. And if I had any particular call up required metadata and, and it was missing, I'd be uh, I'd be alerted to the fact that I should go change those things. I can switch views. I can save views as all of the things that you would expect to do inside the context of a document library. We're bringing that richness across different experiences. In a quick 10 second segue, I showed you that experience in uh, Teams, but for the very same group here, Contoso Sourcing Europe, which was actually an Outlook group before it was a team, uh, has a files experience also. And it, this will also look very familiar where you have uh, the document library, and this is the same shared control that you see here with the same column formatting and the commanding and all of the things that you would expect from a from a document library perspective. All right, we talked about sync and pin and all of the great, great things there. We talked about the news connector. Um, one more thing, I'm going to go back to the Teams experience here. You'll notice that there are a number of different tabs that are pinned up here in, uh, in the Teams experience. So um, I think Mark has pinned a SharePoint page, so this is another way, great way to bring either page experiences or list uh, resources from SharePoint right into Teams. So we have uh, the ability to do this. I'm going to quickly switch over to another browser here for a second. If I was to click on the plus tab uh, action here and click on SharePoint, I can demonstrate at least the types of things that you can do. So when you click on that plus uh, tab and pick the SharePoint uh, uh, tab item, you have the ability to add pages from the site that backs this group or lists. And you can pick any of these things. I'm not going to do that here, just in the interest of time, just bounce back into here. But you'll see that here's one that's a list that will pop up and it will show. Uh, a, a list. I could have picked the pizza list that uh, that uh, Mark showed earlier as well. Uh, but the idea here is that again, you have like a full fidelity experience with SharePoint content right in the context um, uh, of Teams. I think I'm going to show one last thing before we run out of time. So if I'm in the context of a conversation here and I decide that I have a, a file that I want to share with my with my team to chat about, I'm going to go and pick something from my recents list here. Let's pick this guy and upload a copy. When this file gets uploaded, I will have the ability to set the links settings in the same way that you saw Mark demonstrate uh, when he got a link to share a particular file. So again, this is just another example of a, another shared control that we engineer once and it's hosted everywhere, really to drive home the fact that we want to make sure that we've got familiar experiences, whether they span files and lists, uh, yeah, um, and uh, other SharePoint resources and experiences. And in this case, it's also sharing. So you can go and specify the link uh, level security based on the, you know, the settings that your organization might have uh, might have decided. So I'm going to now finish this demo by going back to the site that we had teamified. I'm just going to refresh the page real quick. And you'll note that um, that action actually results in the, the promotional uh, banner disappearing from the left nav, but we will have added the team's um, uh, navigation node to the left nav as well. So there are things that you'll see in the SharePoint site that will that will kind of hint uh, at, the, at the idea that you are connected to an Office 365 group. So I'm just going to go into this one here. And you'll see that I'm in the general folder uh, for Consoso Sourcing Europe. And because this happens to be a channel folder inside Teams, we, we decorate this uh, with a banner in SharePoint. Say, so, yep, you can go to the channel conversation directly. So we're actually tying these experiences together. And we're also, we also add it as a command uh, to the command bar up top as well. So when you're interacting with Teams objects in SharePoint, we're aware of that. We can actually allow you to navigate to. We're doing work to make sure that we have maintained great consistency in terms of naming uh, between the channel name in Teams and, uh, and SharePoint as well. So I know we're two minutes over. I apologize for running through that really quickly, but uh, 
really excited about the work that we're doing to a sort of bring the richness of SharePoint experiences right into teams. If you happen to be an organization that's really embracing this new way of working around uh, persistent chat. But at the same time, uh, if you're a SharePoint uh, customer, we continue to invest in really great collaborative content and collaborative experiences in SharePoint itself. So Mark, back to you. Thank you, Tejas. So hopefully you see that there's a lot of work to get you from classic to modern. And when you think about moving from even on premises into the cloud, you're moving into a really rich Microsoft uh, experience to support teamwork in this modern era. And this is just a, a summary of everything you saw Tejas talk about, where you bring SharePoint into Teams across files, across pages and news. And of course, a lot of things that maybe we didn't touch on too much here from a developer perspective, is you can even bring in SharePoint web parts as app experiences in Microsoft Teams and vice versa. You can bring in uh, Microsoft Team connectors or tabs as page apps in SharePoint. So there's a lot of questions that people ask. How do I use Microsoft Teams versus SharePoint? We really want you to leave this webinar thinking that it's really the both of them. Every team uses SharePoint and use things wherever you're most productive and we know that the better together story will help you be the most productive. So it's really a point plus teams. We have one example here of a customer, Helmeric and Payne, where they've been really seeing the advantage of working both from the home office out to the people that are out on the oil rigs and the oil rigs move often. So they've created a custom application to keep track of where they are and people when they drive to go and be remote, they are mobile of course on their phones, they're working to gain access to figure out where is uh, the job site today is mobile uh, and it does change so that one of their issues was to make sure that the workers knew where they were going without having to call back to HQ and in context that once they're on the site they're working and collecting information finalizing the what did they accomplish that day and pushing that back so that they can keep track of different tasks and activities any changes on the site to the procedures or whatnot to learn from that they would be able to push that through from a Microsoft Teams perspective, but of course all that data collected in SharePoint lists, of course, uh, captured, pushed out uh, from the other use case through a Power App, so they keep on top of where they needed to be. Uh, there's a really great case study that talks about what we do, uh, what we offer through Microsoft Teams and SharePoint to support how American pain. And if you wanna learn more a little bit about the next webinar, there's also a little bit of information about how they do a lot of their work in the outer loop with SharePoint and Yammer. So if we dive in, you'll see a lot of things that we showed today. This is the roadmap as we showed it at Ignite 2018. We certainly will be refreshing this with a lot of news and announcements coming up at the SharePoint conference. But you'll see here a lot of things have shipped, a lot of things that we talked about today, some of the things that we didn't demo and describe, and some of the things, of course, that are coming very soon before the SharePoint conference and some of the things that are always top of mind based on the feedback that you're giving us around what you want to accomplish next in your teamwork to make these tools better to be able to work for you uh, better over time. Another view in terms of other assets, uh, other items that we talked about from a roadmap perspective, again, the webinar next week will go a lot deeper into a lot of these assets and, and information to show you the demo, talk about it in terms of what does it do to your overall intranet for your sites and portals that you can build got a lot of great assets we'll uh, tweet out and link to that are uh, part of this roadmap but we want to definitely invite you to join us in Vegas this is May 21st through the 23rd to come to the MGM Grand to join 150 plus speakers 200 plus sessions with workshops of before and after the conference that offer you everything from what users need what IT needs what developers need and we've got a great equitable hall with 100 plus exhibitors that are to show you how they work and build and help you manage what you do day to day on top of the Microsoft platform. Follow SPC19 if you're on Twitter. Go to the handle SPCConf and you'll see what they're talking about uh, in terms of registration being open, any discount codes that are available. I know that if you have a favorite speaker for one of your sessions and you use their last name as a code when you register that you'll save $50 off registration fee but we encourage you to register today. Come join us for both the content and the fun, both uh, during the day and at night. Um, it's a great event, something that we've been doing for a very long time. Great content, great feedback. We always build off of that year over year. And we're gonna have a great keynote with Jeff Tieper, our corporate vice president, who looks after SharePoint, OneDrive, and Office 
to give us a nice holistic view of what he and his team are working on next. So a lot of news and announcements planned for the SharePoint Conference North America, SPC 19. I hope to see you there. I'll definitely be there. I'd love it if you joined us. Some of the related sessions, and we'll do this for each webinar, just to give you a sense of what type of content you can expect when you come to SPC. We've got a focus of Microsoft Teams and SharePoint together from the adoption and usage perspective with Carawana and Gatamu. We also have Tejas talking about what you can do to get started with team sites. That's both moving from classic to modern and taking advantage of all the great stuff today and some of the things that they're announcing at the conference. Myself and uh, MVP Melissa Hubbard will be focusing on the governance side of teamwork, how you can securely manage, share, and protect your content and collaboration throughout all of your people uh, that are leveraging SharePoint from a team site perspective. And of course, as that works through Microsoft Teams, that changed nothing around governance. You establish your governance, and it's a great story going forward. Then we've got a session with Matt Wolodarski and Ankita Kirti to show you both private adoption for the value we'll see in OneDrive. That really helps you establish the what to do with OneDrive, how do I deploy it, and how do I best manage it over time. And then Jeremy Masner and I will focus on sharing all the news and announcements across all the team sites, business process, and whatnot for what you do in your inner loop. That better together story of SharePoint OneDrive integrated with Microsoft Teams. This is just a case. There's a whole list of sessions already published. More to come in terms of what we'll publish soon around what Microsoft is offering. Microsoft speakers, of course, are strong in the and all the sessions that they offer. Please go check out the website, see what's right for you. Come join us in place. We want to thank you for joining the webinar today. And as a part of thanking you, we hope that you'll go and fill out this form for a chance to win a free pass to join us at the SharePoint Conference 2019. If you follow the link, aka.ms slash SPC slash webinars slash pass slash one guarantee that it's a great way for your chance to win a free pass to the SharePoint conference. Uh, it's an easy form to fill out. Do it today. We're trying to offer it only for those that were attending this webinar, so you won't see this link anywhere else. We're not going to tweet it out. We're not going to share it, but if you didn't win today, you certainly have three more chances at each of the webinars coming up. This link will change the only uh, end number, two, three, and four. So we want to thank our sponsor. I'll certainly uh, do that with pride because I love doing the show. I love hearing the feedback of what you want to hear next. So thank you to the Interzone. Please go and subscribe, rate, and review what you think about the show. Again, we hope to see you at the SharePoint conference. We hope you engage with our technology. We ask for feedback always. And with that, get back to your day, get back to your afternoon, get back to your evening. Thank you, Tate, for a great uh, session. Nice thank to you. always co-present with you and of course to share the information. Let us know questions that you have anytime. We're easy to find. Again, thank you for your time. Have a great day.